Uh, next topic I'm going to present uh, on the, during this event is uh, using and abusing uh, dynamic parameters. Is uh, also a chapter in a partial deep dive book that I wrote. Uh, I haven't wrote whole book. This uh, one of the chapters I wrote there was about using and abusing uh, dynamic parameters. Uh, first of all, uh, have any of you used dynamic parameters in your scripts? Well, I'm really surprised because I was sure that only like two pe people on the planet do that. Uh, and the reason why is when I started to look in for any scripts that actually use dynamic parameters, the only two results that I got back on the posh code was uh, one by Ocean, that didn't surprise me at all. And the second one was Jekyll. Again, no surprise. So this is our two guys, basically, uh, when I talk to them, I kind of feel like, you know, this little guy that's just, just like running up between the legs and, you know, just like, yeah, uh, miners. Uh, first, first of all, I would like to explain why dynamic parameters, what they are, uh, why would you like to do them? Uh, but before, uh, just uh, briefly reminder, I'm uh, engineer at Optiva here in uh, Amsterdam. I'm Microsoft MVP in PowerShell. I write uh, articles for PowerShell magazine in English and IT uh, professional in Polish. Uh, what I'm going to cover today <laughs> is just uh, dynamic versus static. So I'll try to explain what the difference are. Uh, then I will try to show you how you can use dynamic parameters. Then I will walk into the, some abusing the dynamic parameters. So using them in a way they probably never was, were thought to be used. And at the end, I will show you some gotchas. Uh, so, uh, dynamic versus uh, static. So basically, uh, the way I see it is just the environment that you are in de basically defines what you need. So, uh, if you are on the desert and uh, you see a person who is just crawling on the sand and it asks you, uh, do you have some water? You won't ask him the question, do you want still or a sparkling water, <laughs> you will just give him water. Uh, on the other hand, if you go to a restaurant, it's not unlikely that uh, a waiter will ask you, ask you, do you want to steal or the sparkling? Uh, different environment, different situation, so different uh, parameters being presented to you. Uh, same if you go to the Ford factory, they won't ask you like in 20s, they won't ask you for color. For Christ's sake, they have only one, black. So. Uh, if you go these days to the Ford factory, they will actually ask you the question, what color do you want? Back then, it was just black. So uh, in PowerShell, we have also situations where some things uh, make sense in certain contexts, in other, they don't. Uh, again, because uh, this is PowerShell Summit, so we'll move straight to the demos. Well, quick preparation. Something didn't work. Or maybe it worked, but just uh, whatever. I uh, try to uh, increase the font size. I hope that uh, it's visible from back. No. no. I can increase it more. How about now? Um, okay. I will assume that it's visible. Uh, okay. So. Get your item. Uh, first, first of all, there are some parameters obviously that are static. You, when you do get your item, you always want to ask for path. Uh, probably there are some other things that you want to be sure that are there. But uh, de depending on the context, for example, if you use uh, C windows, there obviously can be some directories there. So you want to have the parameter that will allow you to specify that you want only directories. On the other hand, uh, uh, if you want to do the same on the set, it will fail. Why? Well, it, you don't have directories in your <coughs> certificate store. Duh. So, uh, <laughs> next thing you would probably want to do, okay, but certificate store have different things that are there, and maybe you want to filter on those. So, for example, there are dynamic parameters, again, that make sense only in this context. So, for example, uh, consigning set, you don't have cold signing files, right? Uh, expiring in days, your files usually don't expire, I hope. <laughs> so this way I could s easily see, okay, this is uh, my certificate, but it's uh, expired one, so probably I could remove it from the my set. So, um, 
So, because I thought, okay, it's maybe handy to be able to find those parameters, I wrote myself a function. <coughs> Which basically what it does, it tries to compare uh, what are the uh, parameters present on, uh, basically I, I compare results from uh, variable uh, drive that doesn't have any, as far as I know, dynamic parameters with the given provider. So here you can see that, uh, for example, in this context, uh, for add content, I have uh, encoding stream for uh, clear content, I have a stream, uh, which can be used, for example, to remove the, uh, you know, the famous uh, thing from the, from the files downloaded from internet, and so long and so forth. We can also check the third drive, uh, and you have to be aware that it can be really context sensitive. For example, on search, you can see that everything shows up. For, for example. WS man, if we check on the root, we see few uh, dynamic parameters uh, for new item. But if we check uh, WS man localhost client, you will see that on, we have some something extra. Uh, anybody can guess what the concatenate uh, uh, dynamic parameter can be used for in this context? I don't have any books, sorry. Uh, <laughs> So the answer is basically in this context you can define what are the uh, you probably saw it in uh, uh, Richard's demo in this context you define the trusted host. So basically, if you have trusted host and you want to add another one, you don't want to always read the whole thing, add yours and put it back. So instead, you can just uh, use concatenate and then it will just keep what was there, add yours, the new one, and store it in the file in the in this. Uh, uh, item. So that's why set item for this context actually has this concatenate. And we can see it. So if we do it, I'm adding this host. Yeah, it will prompt me because it's so unsecure. Uh, and if we see, uh, if we look at the value, you can see that uh, adding this host is at the end. Nothing was removed from my uh, trusted host. As you can see, this is test machine, right? So. Uh, I trust a lot of things. Uh, and if I just remove it now, yay. Yeah, I want to remove it. Uh, also, uh, not, not sure how, much, how many people are aware of that, uh, Active Directory module ha has really nice features for the creating new PS drives uh, and allows you to specify a lot of uh, nice uh, parameters. For example, format type for me, uh, x500 is, eh, I, I mean, if you, when you browse it and you change to the OU, uh, putting always OU equals something makes your life miserable. <laughs> if you say, uh, I think it's canonical, then you can just see the name of the OU and then suddenly your life is just, well, way better. So uh, that's <coughs> how the dynamic parameters are actually used today. So this was uh, what we have. Now, next thing I want to present is how complicated it is to actually create your own dynamic parameters in contrast with C, uh, C Sharp uh, developer. So C Sharp developer creates something like this. And basically, uh, most of it is just uh, typical. The only thing that uh, it's different here is that it has to call the get dynamic parameters. Uh, and the way dynamic parameters are actually defined, it looks pretty much the same as it does for the normal parameters. So it's so simple. Like, yay. But now we move to PowerShell. And yeah, we'll just set, uh, just to be sure that it actually works. So we will add type it, we will import module, and we will set send greetings, that basically what it does. If you say it's employee, it expects that you have some department. If it's not employee, like my wife, she's not employee in my company. So uh, if I try to add department for her, it will tell me, no, 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 uh, this, this person doesn't have any department. So we can send her greetings, but we won't be able to attach the department to it. Uh, 
Now for the PowerShell way of doing things. I will switch for the just script mode for now. Uh, and you can see here, basically that's is the where uh, how you define the dy dynamic parameter. And then it gets harder and harder because you have to basically build the classes, uh, build objects one by one, add the properties. Uh, from what I've heard, it's basically nobody's seen any uh, value in making it simple. That's why it's so hard. Uh, but there you go. If you really want to use it, you can. But for me, from my perspective, when I look at it, it's just like uh, think twice or even three times or even four times before you add any dynamic parameter. And we'll see in a few minutes why. So uh, this is how you do it. You basically, first of all, you create your uh, uh, parameter object. You add some attributes to it. It's the collection of attributes. So you have uh, the basic parameter attribute, which is uh, with uh, uh, the mandatory, is it uh, take values, values from pipeline or not, wherever there is usually put in parameter uh, attribute. Also, you can put aliases. You can add validations to it. But each of those have to be done like you create an object uh, of a given type. Uh, pass uh, the uh, constructor arguments or just add those by one by one, whatever you prefer. And eventually you create your parameter, uh, you create a, sorry, a parameter collection. You add your parameter to this collection and return the collection itself. So again, uh, in C Sharp, as you saw, it was just like breeze. And here it's just like, uh, okay. Something bad happened. <sighs> well, it actually just died on me. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing it at the moment. Uh, so while it, while it loads. Is it your machine that's died? Yeah, it just died my machine. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's what demo does. Gods do, do, do for you when you don't uh, sacrifice enough uh, virgins before the <laughs> session. <laughs> uh, well, first you need to find one, right? So it's just, uh, yeah, that was rude, I know. Um, it was, it was consoles that were sacrificing Sorry? Yeah, I think this is just, uh, Lee, uh, you just, your lamp didn't die. That's why, I guess. Yeah. Okay, let's, let me try. Okay. Um, I hope it will survive until the end of the sessions. I probably didn't type the password correctly. As you can see, I always run IEC as administrator. I shouldn't, but I'm bad boy, so I always do it. Thank you for adding this feature to ISC, so I don't have to open the files again. Now they are open. I just need to increase the font size, and that's it. <sighs> OK. Uh, I think I made it even bigger than previous time, but let's move on. Uh, so my function, let's try to define it now. Oh, I see it's still loading uh, my modules. Take a while. Uh, so basically, you have to remember that this is just uh, the way it is in the V3.4. Uh, I will show you in a minute how, or maybe I can show you the code because it's loading still. So I can at least show you the code for the V5 because uh, you know, uh, we were we have uh, the we had a nice presentation about classes uh, and about the new uh, new uh, static method that it's just like fake method on the each class that you have. Uh, actually, uh, the fun part is that you can actually use it on the on those classes that we need for the uh, dynamic parameters. And my laptop is really playing games with me now. Nope. OK, 
Okay, so let's move on to dynamic parameter. So basically, if you look at the code now, it's just uh, I create a collection. I pass the array of uh, my attributes to it. No really, no rocket science there, but with the new, I can easily create uh, uh, the parameter. I can create validate set easily. Uh, same applies to my right time defined parameter. Again, relatively simple now. Dictionary and return it. So uh, even for the, the intention was just to make a class available or uh, do usable. Uh, it still improved the experience for anybody who will try to write dynamic parameters because now, you, well, it maybe saves you a lot of uh, typing and remembering all these uh, uh, structures that you have to first create before you can actually do anything. Okay, let me close. Stop it. <coughs> okay. Would be a nice snippet. Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> okay, so let me define a function. And you probably guessed that uh, it will just do the same, but this time in PowerShell. So I can just again say uh, employee, and now department is there with all the things that are linked to it. And if I say employee, uh, I remove employee and try department, it will just fail. <coughs> uh, so uh, V5, again, I do the same, but. Uh, Code-wise, code, code wise, it's just simpler. So I can just do v5, get error first out of the way. Now I'm just saying it's employee. And I get first error again, probably because the uh, validate set is different. Yeah. OK. So this is how you can basically uh, see how, how complicated it may be to create those uh, dynamic parameters when you do it in PowerShell, not in uh, C Sharp. Uh, now for the using. Uh, first function is just a very simple one. Basically, uh, when you want to create a greeting, basically there the, are the two options. First of all, uh, somebody passed you the name of the person but forgot that it's really polite to put the uh, uh, first letter in capitals. Uh, and in such a case, you probably want to capitalize it. And there you go. It capitalized it for me. Uh, on the other hand, if it's fine, you don't want to capitalize it, right? So it's changing context. Now you have the correct name. You don't want to change it. But this is just like a pretty lame uh, implementation. Just something, yeah, context change, but not so much. Another thing is just uh, mimicking the uh, PowerShell way of do thinking. Uh, PowerShell way of thinking is that if you switch between providers, if you change the path, that's when you really want to change your dynamic parameters, add them or remove them. So let's create the credential object. And this is in line with the, uh, what, uh, what uh, Lee was uh, showing yesterday. Now we want to save those credentials. Because uh, in V3 and above, we can uh, pretty easily uh, serialize and deserialize uh, uh, the uh, credential object. We can store it. We can store it on drive, but we can store it in a registry. Sure, why not? Let's try it. Uh, so before I do that, I create uh, myself the function I dynamic parameter, which basically takes the uh, name type of the dynamic parameter and uh, if it's mandatory or not and uh, creates all those juice for me so I don't have to remember it myself uh, and I have two functions save credential which will check what's the current path and depending on the uh, provider name if it's file system it will give me option to specify that the file should be hidden well, probably it's not a security measure, but at least for the you know normal person, it will be uh, will, it will disappear. And for registry, I want to specify the name of the uh, property. I don't want to put it in default. I don't want to specify the path to the to the uh, to my uh, credentials and also uh, the uh, key, sorry, the value that I want to store it in. So, depending on my context, I will change my behavior. So let me define this function as well. And together with this, I will also define the other one, which is load credentials. Obviously, if you save them, you at certain point want to load them back. So this is save credential. This is load credential. 
so if I want to save credential and I specify the name of the key, let me try to find it. So we can see that the test and there are my serialized credentials. And if I try to do the same on the desk, well, I cannot really uh, add the name to the file on the desk like uh, I can for registry. So if I try it, it will fail. And this is expected, like right? if, if I would give a user experience that he ha can specify the name, he would expect to have the name back, right? If he will read those, he, will, he would expect to have different options like uh, name one, name two, name three, and have them all in one registry key but with different names. Well, that won't work for the file. It will work for registry. And if I try to load, there you go. My secret password. So it really works. Uh, we can serialize, deserialize uh, credentials easily. So this is using. Now for the app using. What I mean by that? Uh, well, uh, the whole idea was a, s a side effect of uh, answering the question from somebody from community. He basically wanted to have some option to uh, write a function that will uh, have type assigned to the uh, one of the parameters, but the type was something specific. And it is his, in his case, it was actually uh, type defined in Active Directory module. Uh, Autoloading is fine, it's great, it loads everything you want, but only if you ask for commands. If you ask for types that are defined within the module, it won't autoload it. It will just buff on you, and it won't tell you that this is uh, the uh, please load Active Directory module. Instead, it will tell you that this type doesn't exist. So what he wanted is to have something, some hook between the uh, defin definition of function, uh, actual uh, binding of the uh, parameters, and the moment where the type is defined. And this is how you can abuse dynamic parameters. You can actually, in dynamic parameter, you can specify something that will run before the parameter will be bound, which means that you can basically uh, check if the module is there, if the module is not there, uh, uh, show the friendly error message rather than just buff on the type missing. Uh, and if the module is there, you can just load it before anything is being used. So the command will just work. So, uh, this is just normal way of doing it. So what I do here, I specify that this, uh, this parameter should be just uh, Microsoft Active Directory Management AD user. I don't have module, uh, Active Directory module loaded, I hope. Otherwise it will just work. It's not there. So if I try to use it, And I can even specify the very legit user. It will complain, as I described before, that this type, this type doesn't exist. So uh, for user experience, it's really bad because it's like, okay, he wanted to have a function that will actually use the type rather than just string and just convert it himself. But if somebody will run it without Active Directory module loaded, uh, he will get prompt about some type and the user that uh, used his function He didn't want it this type. He just wanted to get user for Christ's sake So he will just see that okay something is wrong. So the, the function is wrong. You just uh, have to rewrite it whatever Just do it right. So if you want to do it right with dynamic parameters Let me define a function first. I will take a look at the show you how how it's being done Again, it's just uh, it was written for v2, so I assume that we don't have any nice uh, uh, juicy uh, new uh, keyword, uh, sorry, new static methods uh, on the any type. So I just had to do all the old-fashioned way. But anyway, as you can see here, uh, if I cannot find this uh, module, yeah, I cannot add my parameter yet. So let's try to import the module. If it fails, let's throw it the message because yeah, we don't want to move further. We cannot load the Active Directory modules. It's not there, so we cannot use the type that's defined with the, within this module. If it's there, we have the module loaded. So now the type exists, 
and we can actually add this parameter with this type. So we can see the type is there here. So let's try again. It won't work because I don't have any uh, Active Directory here, but at least it will load the module and try to help me with that. Test type dynamic. dynamic. Yeah, so we can see uh, it complained because uh, my laptop is not a member of any domain. I don't have any DC available, so it complains that uh, unable to find def default blah blah blah. But as you can see now, I get a uh, response that makes sense. It basically tells me that git aid user was not able to find uh, the, the service. Yeah, that's fine. If I would run it on the computer that actually has access to directory, it would just work without loading module first. Even for the only thing I did was, uh, well, define the type on top. So this is one way of abusing it. Another thing is uh, uh, validation. I've seen it a lot, and I thought, okay, let's try it. So first, this 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 function basically it assumes that okay, you want to ping a group of hosts, so like network. Uh, you can probably just specify the uh, prefix and uh, the size of the network. That probably would be the smarter way. But I thought that maybe. Let's make it harder. So uh, the way it will validate, basically, if you specify three nodes of the IP address, then it expects only one number and something like that. So uh, in this way, this, this case, you basically define your prefix. You m make sure that it matches. And then depending on what you actually have, so do you have one or two or three, you define a pattern for the other parameter that should basically be used for validate uh, pattern. And in both matches, then you are OK. If no, then you just get the error, error message back. I won't use it now because I don't have any computers to, to ping. But basically, when I tested it, it just gave me uh, this experience. So I could put the three nodes and one, uh, one range for the IP address or uh, depending on the on the way I, I did it, I also saw something like that that so, so people were uh, so happy about V3 feature when you can when you have validate set, you can basically uh, tap complete the names of things. So people would actually go ahead and type uh, define dynamic parameter for uh, parameter they wanted to have this kind of experience, but the data was dynamic. For example. Uh, let's say you have some VMs on your box and you want to tap complete the VM name. Yay, let's just create a dynamic parameter uh, name and make sure that uh, the validate set will always contain uh, the list of VMs that we actually have on our box. It works. You will see in a minute, I hope, if my computer won't stop. So I basically wrote a, a proxy function. And all it does, it basically defines this uh, dynamic parameter. Let me just switch to this mode so you can see more. So basically, it defines this. Uh, I removed from the parameters that exist on the function. I just left the computer name because that's what I care about. Uh, so I added the parameter name. As you can see, I said uh, to for VM names, I just do Hyper-V, get VM, and then just get the names. And then I create validate set using those names. And I added as attributes to my uh, dynamic parameter. And once it's done, I just uh, follow the usual footsteps for the proxy function. I don't even have to uh, add this parameter there because it will show up in PSBand parameters. So it will be uh, passed to uh, um, proxy function, uh, proxy command let get VM. And yeah, so let's select it. I don't have steroids now. Ah, that's so painful. <coughs> now, it gets used to it so quickly. I was trying to use Ctrl Q that usually just uh, selects things uh, smart way. And it goes up, up, up until you are happy. You can also go down, down, down until you are happy. But not so much when you have the crappy laptop that just fails on you. So get my VM. 
and now name and I can yeah I can type complete all those VMs but wait a minute but in my opinion this is just uh, uh, missing uh, one important thing there's better way to do it way better way to do it you basically uh, just to be sure that I have this module loaded so basically that's the way you do it you get the uh, top expansion plus plus from Jason Shirk and you are happy camper because now you can do so many things, so many top completions without writing dynamic parameters. And you already saw how painful it is to write dynamic parameters. So uh, let me show how it works with VMs. Uh, so I, I don't have to proxy get VM to get this experience. I just use get VM and name show up as well. No problem there. How do you do that? Well, let's define some funky function that will just, uh, what it will do, it will try to uh, create, uh, basically, uh, for the parameter name, you will use this text file that I just uh, have here. Okay. At least this one work. Okay. So you can see the content of the file. There are four VMs I have on my box. And instead of uh, writing dynamic parameter for my parameter name, I would just register argument completer for this command with this parameter. And the script block, well, those common uh, parameter set that you use. <coughs> and next thing you do, I just get content of this file. Well, that's what I wanted, right? And uh, make sure that it actually matches with the word to complete. And for each object, I just do new completion result, specify the uh, line and uh, uh, tag, uh, sorry, the, the tooltip uh, that I want to use for that. So let's just run it. And now I uh, was get PC. Yep. Get PC name. Ta uh, without any, uh, even single line of dynamic parameter defined definition, I could do the same just by running the. Uh, by installing tap expression plus plus and it's well PowerShell module so it just uh, copy X deployment and running this command and for the module that you have on your box you don't even even have to use register argument completer because you can just drop the uh, definition of the tap completion completion for your module that's what I did with the uh, get VM for example and with that you can just use the tap completion all <coughs> over the place for any kind of dynamic da data that you have. Uh, gotchas, because there are some gotchas that may bite you sooner or later. First of all, uh, and this, those gotchas are basically the reason why I say you have to re really think, uh, do you really, 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 really want to have dynamic parameter for your command? So the purpose of the session is not only to show you how you do it, but also uh, tell you that you should really well, consider other options before you actually start doing it. Uh, so. I have two scripts, no path and with path. Let's try to go to set and try to discover what do we have for our script without path. And if you can see here, I got the completion that yeah expiring in days. I'm in set, so expiring in days would show up if I would try to tap complete this command. But if I move to C, then with no path, I don't get anything. So I have to specify the path first to third drive. And then, because I'm on now uh, the command will know, okay, he wants to get something from certificate saw, it will, when I type minus exclude, it will tap complete to exclude. So you know that, you know, you have to remember of the order. So it gets uh, really, uh, well, usability drops dramatically when you have dynamic parameters, unlike with the static, where, well, they always show up. So if we try the same with, with path, now I get back my expiring days. That's what I wanted. Another thing is uh, getting help. So uh, depending on the context, you will get help or you won't. So if I try to get help for uh, expiring in days, uh, when I'm uh, on the file system provider, it will buffer me. 
there's no such parameter. <coughs> but I know it is, right? So what the heck? Uh, so I have two options. Uh, I can go back and try there. And now when I'm insert store, you can see in the provider certificate, certificate now. Uh, yeah, the help is there. Excellent. But discover it, the discoverability of this uh, help is, well, not there really. And I can do the same by specifying the path. So you can see how really, uh, how much the dynamic parameters are linked with to the paths. Because you don't have, uh, for example, uh, is name capitals for help to check if the, you can capitalize the name. But you get the, the parameter path for get help. So if you are want to check the help for different path that you are currently sitting in, you can always specify the path and see it. And the worst part, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. Oh, of course. Uh, so uh, online help for any commandlet will always cut off anything dynamic. Obviously, if you look at the online help for, for given commandlet, it doesn't know where you sit. It has no idea if you are in the uh, certificate store, if you are on the C drive, or are you maybe on Active Directory drive. So it cannot really tell you uh, it cannot really tell which dynamic parameters it should present to you. So instead of being misleading and showing you something that you want you be able to use in a given context, it won't show you anything. And the only way to get there is just to uh, read uh, help online for the given uh, provider. So let's pop location again. And yeah, that's uh, provider help. Maybe I can use show window instead so that we can see something. <sighs> yeah, show help doesn't work very well about uh, on uh, those uh, kind of uh, documents, unfortunately. Uh, so let me just scroll up. And if you look uh, here, uh, you can see all those dynamic parameters at the bottom. You can see that there's SSL server authentication. You can see what param uh, what command lets actually support this. So you can read these documents online as well and see the help for the command that you are you are want you want to use in a given context as well. But remember our get getting uh, function. I hope it still exists. Uh, if you are writing your own commands, that will never, ever, ever happen. So even if I specify the path and I just, uh, well, basically uh, get, decide if the parameter should be there based on path or not, uh, it won't show up in help anyway. So for your commands, user will never be able to see the help. You can write it, sure. If you will open the module file or script file, He'll be able to read it as a comment, sure, but he won't be able to use it uh, in the get help, unfortunately. Uh, another command that is, uh, yes? Even if you add a parameter uh, into, the, into the comment block, without parameter, you uh, the question is, is, is it uh, possible to just add it as a hash parameter and name of parameter and specify the help there? I tried it and it didn't work because I think it's just evaluating what parameters are there uh, because the di uh, parameter is dynamic, parameter is not there when you really check, so <coughs> help is ignored. So it's same like you would have the uh, dot uh, parameter and specify some bogus name. Uh, it would never show up as well, but it's still there, right? Uh, so the forget command again. If you look at the syntax for the new PS drive, uh, and I'm currently in the uh, file system, I don't see all the parameters that are available on other drives. So if I try to specify the argument list, so this is the way to do go with uh, get command. If you want to uh, force get command to actually change the context, you have to specify argument list, and it will treat all of those parameters that you specify here as positional. So if the command will take positionals, fine, you can actually discover uh, those uh, dynamic parameters. If not, sorry, uh, 
in such a case, you can see that, yeah, now that I specified that argument list that's AD and Active Directory is, uh, AD is the name of the uh, PS drive, Active Directory is the PS provider. And if I say it, I can see the alt type, server, format type, global catalog, all those, uh, all those special uh, uh, dynamic parameters that exist for this command. And yeah, as you can see, if I try to see uh, format type, obviously, because I'm still in the same context, I don't see the, the details about the format type, because in this context, it doesn't exist. <coughs> uh, another thing that uh, uh, can bite you is just the uh, fact that when you use shortened uh, parameter names, PowerShell will never take care about dynamics dynamic parameters. It will always focus on the static. If one of the static will, uh, will uh, meet its needs, fine. It will completely ignore what you have, what else you have there. So if you do something like that, you don't get directories. You don't get error that there's two parameters, dynamic directory on this command. You just get debug and that's it. Uh, but if you check, yeah, directory is there. So what's going on? You can see the aliases are there. So there's even alias defined D. Not sure why, because it never works. Uh, and unlike uh, error, for example, if, if you could specify the same with E and you have a few static parameters that uh, uh, match the, the pattern, you will get error message. Instead, the unexpected behavior like we had with the D. So what you can do, you have to be sure that you just make it disambiguated. Uh, yeah, I don't have any directories in this folder, unfortunately, <laughs> so you get, don't, I don't get any results back, but still, uh, you can pretty get much guess what will happen if I would do it in a different context. Uh, another thing is positionals. I probably will stop this because this doesn't make sense. But, well, if I try to do this, so first of all, what I want to do the, here, I want to check what are the code signing certificates in a third drive on my disk. And what I get back, parameter cannot be found that matches parameter name code. So I shortened the code signing sig sig uh, certificate. And the problem is that before, because I put a path as positional, you can see it at the end. Uh, PowerShell was looking in the positions and for some reason assumed uh, some strange things and didn't even uh, get to the dynamic parameter that I wanted. So the way to do it is just reverse order. So if the path is first, <coughs> it's bind by position and now ta -da, it works. So uh, another thing is just, uh, well, somebody suggested that it should work like this fails for me for some reason probably I'm doing it wrong uh, another thing is just to use the named uh, parameter path and then it works as well so we can see there are a lot of uh, issues that you can walk into when you use the dynamic parameters so that's why you want to be careful with that uh, okay another thing is that uh, if you start using dynamic parameters you have to remember that this is uh, a feature that should be used only in the context of the functions that are, have the full structure, full GC with begin, process, and end block. If you miss one, you either get error because it will complain that you forgot to put something there, or it will try to treat dynamic parameter as a command. So now if I try to run it, dynamic parameter as command, it will tell me that it doesn't recognize the name dynamic parameter as a command. So if I put it in the right context, so I have begin, dynamic parameter in process and wherever, then it works. So we can just run it. It looks like I'm out of time. <coughs> yeah, so now it works. Uh, uh, somebody mentioned uh, the but well, for that, I have to start to wait, because they are so cool. Uh, any questions, maybe? Why are they are loading? <coughs> I don't see any questions, so 
I said that uh, I know. Uh, I said I said that the the, fi the finding dynamic parameters is hard, but you can make it make yourself make, make yourself a favor uh, with uh, isosteroids from from uh, Tobias. You can again define the shortcut keys. So now if I try to create the first, let me create the dynamic function. Oh, it doesn't pick up. Okay, let's use this one. So Tim and look. Binding arm and and hope this one will work. Of course not. Okay, so <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I broke my computer very badly. Anyway, if you define your uh, snippets in uh, here, you can always uh, define also shortcuts for them. Mine has, are gone for some reason. Uh, and you can see you can specify also scope. So, it, because dynamic parameter makes sense only in the script block scope, it doesn't make sense to put it in param block or attribute or pipeline or comment. So, you can really limit those and just define the shortcut over here. And this is what I done, but it didn't work. Uh, and by that, you just basically put your whole dynamic parameter block in the, in your ISC and you are good to go. You just have to modify a few things and you are uh, off for races. And with that, I would like to thank you. Let me go back to, oh, I don't have PowerPoint. <laughs> See? I really crappy with the girls too. Yeah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Questions? Any questions, by the way? You are hungry. You just want to eat. <laughs> I know. Okay, thank you very much then. Thank you.